Point on the set. Camera speed. Sound production. Roll sound. Rolling. Sound production. Take two. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie Podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? Now, we're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Or, your father was right. You were an idiot, and everything you watched was stupid. <laughs> so buckle up, movie aficionados. Over the top gore, check. Over embellished action, check. Gratuitous nudity, double check. Storyline so absurd you could drive a semi truck through those plot holes. Oh, yeah, some of those movies didn't even know what a movie plot was, and that's the way we liked it. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. Okay, welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. This is the YouTube version. Um, the difference between, if you'll, you sometimes you'll see two versions of our podcast. One says YouTube episode and the other says podcast episode. Uh, stuff like that uh, will not be in the podcast episode. There'll be no trivia. There'll be no other, sometimes review new movies that came out on streaming. Uh, it is heavily edited. It sounds better. Um a lot of ums aren't in there but <laughs> and yeah this uh, is a pre-recorded and a warning because <laughs> as i was setting it up everything's christmas <laughs> your background my background everything around the the screen it's all christmas because we uh this we oh, recorded yeah, that's right we recorded around christmas time it was a backup episode in case someone got sick and we decided that we needed to put it out because it's just been sitting there and it's a holiday coming up easter we thought why not what's it called bed knobs and broomsticks jesus christ <laughs> i thought you were looking for the word of something else not the title of the movie no no i'm looking for the title of the movie <laughs> oh, okay cool cool all right so without further ado here is bed knobs and broomsticks okay your bonus ones Bed knobs and broomsticks. Yar. Which actually doing getting the stuff ready. Kind of excited about seeing it. Honestly, it has been so long since I've seen it. I've seen it a few times, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. I was literally a kid. Like I remember watching yeah. it in the eighties and nineties. Oh yeah, I watched it on the I Disney Channel. Oh no! I watched it on the CBC Sunday night. Oh, so, and I probably watched it on the yeah the Sunday yeah. night movie. But yeah, no, I haven't seen it since probably the early nineties. You know when you got too cool yeah at that, least Josh. yeah. Yeah, man. where are you? Oh, B for bed knobs. <laughs> there you are. Get out of there. All right. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. We are we're going to watch a Disney movie again. Yeah, we are. Bed Knobs and Broomsticks with Angela Lansbury. OG. Leaving, what is that place she lived in? Cabot Cove? No. Cabot Cove. Cabot Cove. Is it Cabot Cove? Cabot, Cabot Cove. Cove. Cabot Cove. To uh, go to England and play with some cartoons. Correct. <laughs> what do you remember about this movie? I remember this movie being very fanciful and very whimsical. And I remember it being a lot of fun. Now, I'd also like to preface that as saying, saying that I haven't seen this probably since the early 90s. But that's what I, I remember. It was It was very fun and it was very full of fantasy and whimsy. Yep. Um, I've seen it a few times. I probably have not seen it since then either. It, yeah. Um, I saw it on the Disney Channel. I probably saw it on the Wonderful World of Disney. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I, I definitely remember the Nazis <laughs> and the cartoon, the cart where they go into the cartoon part. I remember that the I remember. part. I completely forgot about the Nazis. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Nazis. Wow. So many Nazis. Yeah. Dirty Nazis. <laughs> Fuck the Nazis. But I do remember liking this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I it's I, I it's I I remember liking it. It was up there with like Mary Poppins and those oh, yeah. type of movies. Yeah. It was it was always fun to watch these movies that were kind of um not in the norm, you know? Like it wasn't just like No, like, these were definitely it. fantasy. Yeah. yeah. Kids fantasy. Kid fantasy movies. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's look at the box office. It opened October 7th, 1971. It had a budget of 20 million. Mm-hmm. It's a lot for 1971. Yeah. But it only made $17.8 million um, at the box office. So it did not do well. But it did win an Oscar, I believe, for effects. It makes sense. Also, this was probably the beginning of... Um, because they did a little bit of uh, animation with live action before this yeah if, like mary poppins was 60 something this was also a lot more interactive between the yes. live action and the animation whereas before they would have it like either side by side or but this was more like tactile if i'm not mistaken um now who who was who was mary poppins that's julie andrews right yep julie andrews yeah. Julie Andrews was asked to actually do bed knobs and broomsticks. Mm. Uh, she did not. She said no. And then she said she was thinking about it and she really wanted to work with Disney again. And it was a musical. So she said she made a mistake, called them back. And they said, mm, we already signed M- Madam Angela Lansbury. So mm. it was almost Julia, Julie Andrews that did this movie. Which makes sense. Yeah. But I remember uh, liking Angela Lansbury in this. And I would have saw this way before Oh yeah, uh, Murder, She Wrote. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Angela Lansbury is a G. Was it G? Has she passed away? No, I don't think she has. has right she? on. Oh, no, she did last year. That's right, she did. Yeah. Oh, but she's a G. I remember that, yeah. yeah she always died. has been, always will be. Yeah, October 11th, 2022. Mm-hmm. She was born in 1925. I know. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. She was a hobby too. Yeah, when you see it, <laughs> you keep thinking of murder she wrote. <laughs> yeah, but you don't but, realize. Like, she was she in was... movie like 20, 30 years before that. Oh, Yeah. She was like a super hottie <laughs> back in like the 40s and 50s. I know it's weird because I just keep thinking murder she wrote. Mm. All right, let's go to the tail of the tape. Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was released in 1971. He's a kids and family fantasy rated G. Jesus Christ, one hour and 57 minutes long. This is another long one. <laughs> Yeah, especially for a kids movie. That's that's a lot of time yeah. to commit little kids to. Taglines. The most magical one of all. Okay. They're talking about fun. the bed knob. Yes, that's exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> or the broomstick. The bewitching, bedazzling, magical musical. Eh. You'll be witched. You'll be dazzled. You'll be swept into a world of enchantment beyond anything before. Too many words. That's it. That's all you need. Bed knobs of Brusick synopsis. All right. During the Battle of Britain, that's why there's Nazis, Miss Eglinton sure. Price, Angela Lansbury, a cunning witch in training. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Decides to use her supernatural powers to defeat the Nazi menace. She sets out to accomplish this task with the aid of three inventive children who have been evacuated from the London Blitz. Joined by Emilius Brown, David Tomlinson, the head of Miss Price's witchcraft training and correspondence school, the crew uses an enchanted bed to travel into fantasy land and foil encroaching German troops. 
I don't. I know there were Nazis in it. I didn't think they were that big of a. Disney is fighting Nazis. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, I think uh, Walt Disney was gone by then. <laughs> <laughs> Which would explain so much. He's a. He was a bit of a sympathizer. Yeah. Some people say he was just straight up. It was past sympathizing. Yeah. He was just this, a Nazi. This script was sitting somewhere, and they're just waiting for him to die so they can make this movie. They were like, "Oh, Walt's dead. <laughs> I have a script. Now we, can, now we can make this movie." Oh, there's the poster. Mm. Um, their posters, like, because we did um, Escape to Witch Mountain. Yeah, they look like kids' books. They really do. Yeah. Which and I can appreciate. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm sure it was fine back in the day. For those listening, it is Angela Lansbury riding a motorbike with a sidecar with the kids in it. Uh, the 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 other guy is on top, and he's with a whole bunch of soccer playing cartoons. But it, yeah, it looks like a a, a children's book, children's mm-hmm. storybook. Not that that's. No, it's just it's it's a nice little touch that Disney apparently did with his movies for yeah. kids in the 70s it's great right. marketing yeah well it didn't make any money so not that great yeah but <laughs> taking your kids to the movie wasn't a normal thing in 1971 that's true certified fresh rotten tomatoes and imdb 36 critic reviews has this at 67 percent uh, it's not bad. It's no. not not as high as you would think, mm. but a hundred thousand audience has that seventy four percent. So audience liked it a little bit more. Critic consensus is bed knobs and broomsticks often feels like a pale limit imitation of a certain magical guardian and her warts, but a spoonful of Angela Lansbury's witty star power helps the uh, oh fuck derivativeness go down. My thing was, my slide button was in front of that. So, yes, when I was going, putting the things, this, there is a lot, a lot of comparisons to Mary Poppins. Um, uh, To be expected. Yeah. All right. If you want to start with the fresh. Angela Lansbury's zany feature is just as enchanting as it was in 1971 and more radical than some may remember. Rebecca Long, Observer. Hmm. A fun, fairly intelligent, unexpectedly witty example of cinema for children at a time when the genre was at one of its lowest ever ebbs. In brain, Antagony and Ecstasy original score, 7 out of 10. Hmm. It's a little uneven, but at its best, Bedknobs and Broomsticks rivals the joy and wonder of Mary Poppins. Richard Luck, Film 4, original score, 4 out of 5. Angela Lansbury shows off her singing, dancing, and comic skills, which I think even overshadowed the film Oscar-winning special effects. Betty Jo Tucker, Real Talk Movie. If Jessica Fletcher was a witch all along, you think she could have kept Cabot Cove a little safer. Pete Vonderhaar, Film Threat, original score, 3 out of 5. That was funny. (laughs) The Rotten. Has many moments rooted in movie magic, but there's also a whole lot of filler that brings the movie to a length that's more than bearable. Ryan Cracknell, Movie Views. It's Disney and it has magic in it, but for me, it's a stretch to call the film magical. James Plath, Movie Metropolis, original score 6 out of 10. Mm. Mm. I suspect the movie will be something of a long, uninterrupted sit for the very children for whom it's intended. And an even longer one for those parents and guardians, both adults and teenage, who will probably accompany them. Vincent Canby, New York Times. The Disney organization is worst when it makes family entertainment and best when it sticks to pure, simple, charming fantasy. Roger Ebert, Chicago Chicago Sun-Times, original score 2.5 out of 4. Damn, Ebert. Yeah. IMDb. 40,000 user ratings have it at 7 out of 10. Not bad. Magical. Whimsical. Altogether special. Took me to another world. 10 out of 10. Uh, Linian Woodstock. 
Oh, Frank, she's a hippie. <laughs> of course it took her. She's probably high when she watched it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most underrated live-action Disney films. 9 out of 10. Gavin, Lord of the Foo, 48-460-297. It was high when he did that. Oh, 100%. Oops. Not bad for a B grade Mary Poppins. Eight out of ten. Bad web diver. Damn, just saying it out loud like that. Uh sort of like Mary Poppins with Nazis. Seven <laughs> out of ten. Snoopy style. Some decent moments and a lot of filler. Six out of ten. Plankton rules. When's it gonna end? Five out of ten. Norm.vogel at Verizon.net. <laughs> Just straight up putting his email address in there i wonder how many people emailed him <laughs> bewilderment and befuddlement four out of ten jay wolfgram graham there was no three out of ten there was no three out of ten there was no, no two, out, two of 10. out of ten skip it one out of ten wiley j jordan <laughs> he didn't mince his words and there's only two one out of tens so yeah i've got only two one out of tens no twos and no threes that's not bad and and to be fair disney does have a, a, a pretty good track especially 60s 70s 80s 90s yeah yeah i mean they were really right. making movies movies for kids kids yeah they didn't give a fuck about the adults with them at that point now they care a little more yes and i think that's i and Walt Disney, mm. um, he, whether you liked him or not, he was very kid centric. Like he, like I remember reading things about he made movies that he wanted his kids to see, yeah. like his daughters to see. And uh, so on that point, it, it was awesome because growing up watching Disney movies was awesome. Well, to me, I watched a lot of them. Mm. Uh, here is the trailer for. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Elbow, henbean, aconite, firefly light. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Disney's wildest and most fantastic adventure. Welcome to Naboom Boo Lagoon. Only Disney could conjure up the fun and sorcery in bed knobs and broomsticks. Let's have a nice clean game. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Bewitching fantasy about spells, black cats, and medieval armor brought to life by magic. <laughs> Stupid Nazi. presents bed knobs and broomsticks you will believe a woman can fly almost <laughs> almost what are your predictions for bed knobs and broomsticks um i think i will like it i don't think i'll love it though but i i think i'll like it yeah, uh, I think the can a lot of the, the things that people were were driving home was the length. Um, yeah, but I'm not a kid, so I I think I'm gonna like it too. It, it does look the cartoon part looks funny. The, mm -hmm. Those rascally Nazis look funny. <laughs> it's rascally Nazis. They were rascals. Oh, such <laughs> rascals! Such rascals! Yeah, I think I'm going to probably like it. I'm going to try watching it with my kids and see which ones stick around for the two hours. 
There's your rating system. Yeah. One yeah, kid. Many, yeah. One. One kid, kid stayed. Yeah. No, I know all of them aren't, but you know, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we are gonna go watch Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and come back and see if it was any good or as good as we remember. Yay! Woo woo. Okay. Good. Wait for applause. <laughs> All right. Okay, so before we move on or before we end, we're going to go through some trivia of the movie that we just previewed and reviewed, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, over the Easter holiday because nothing says Easter like witchcraft and Nazis. <laughs> I mean, that screams Easter to me. Yeah, can't have Easter without some Nazis. Those rascals. Mm -hmm. And bed knobs. Don't forget the bed knobs. And, be and the bed knobs. All right, so here's some trivia. And you may start. For sure. Let me make this bigger. Um, Julie Andrews initially turned down the role of Miss Eglinton Price. She eventually reconsidered, believing she owed her movie career to Walt Disney Studios and wanted to work there again. When she told the studio she changed her mind, Dame Angela Lansbury had already been cast. I yes, it Angela been, Lansbury. I wonder what it would have been different. Do you know Julie Probably. Andrews? Oh my God, she aged incredible. <laughs> oh, she looks oh, amazing. Like holy shit. Oh yeah, no, no, no. She she is working it, and I think uh, she's like, is she ninety. She's yeah, she's up or like there. she's at least late eighties. Yeah, these are the things she, I always wonder about. Um, but yeah, I don't know the last picture I saw of her, but yeah, I was like, she doesn't look her age. All right. Filming lasted 57 days while the animation and special effects required five months each to complete. So 57 days and then like 10 months of. <laughs> wow. That's actually not bad. Okay. There's Easter eggs here. I'm just wondering if you catch them. Okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Richard M. Sherman and Robert B. Sherman wrote two songs that never made it past pre-production despite Richard's protests. In The Fundamental Element, Miss Eglinton Price would have explained her philosophy to the children after turning Charlie into a rabbit. Miss Price would have sung Solid Citizen to distract King Leonidas, Leonidas, Leonidas. and get the mat. Leonidas. Uh, sorry. Sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> I, I spent too much time on the Danforth um, in my youth. Anyways, and get the magic star. Ultimately, the soccer game replaced it. Both went unheard until demos performed by Richard Sherman appeared on the CD soundtrack reissue. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is interesting because as a kid, I I totally remembered the soccer. Oh yeah, the soccer was the one thing I remembered probably the most from this. I think that was a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because the soccer is the memory that sticks with me. And for years, I couldn't even remember what movie it was from. But I could very clearly see this soccer, animated yeah. soccer game happening in my head. Yeah. And uh, after watching it, Portobello Road is now the mm. one that sticks with me. <laughs> my kids got my kids got to hear a lot of it, <laughs> of me singing it. Uh, this movie premiered at New York City's Radio City Music Hall. The Music Hall's Christmas stage show ran so long that movie premieres had to run less than two hours. After much debate, Disney cut this movie down to one hour and 57 minutes. The Sherman brothers decided not to renew their contract with Disney after the same thing happened to the happiest millionaire, the one and only genuine original family band uh, from 1968. So they were pissy that... They took out all these songs and cut. I wonder yeah. how long it originally was. And you think, I guess this must have been like a big deal to premiere the movie at Radio City Music Hall. Because nowadays people wouldn't give a shit. No, um, they don't really care where the premiere is happening. But there were certain theaters and certain uh, spaces yeah. that were known for movie premieres. And if your movie premiered there, that meant they were, they were putting a lot of money behind it. Yeah. And it mattered. Hidden Mickey. In the establishing shot of the animated soccer game, a bear wearing a Mickey Mouse t-shirt in the crowd is in the crowd on the right side of the frame. Ooh. 
valid. I went on my phone so I could just screen capture. Yeah. Disney Plus, you fucking Nazis. They <laughs> will not let you screen capture on my own phone on their app. I'm like, how are they? Wait, you you can't tell me what I can take. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting all pissy. I had to go and take these pictures. Yeah. Look how grainy they look. Fucking Disney. But you can still see it. You can see still yes. see little Mickey on the little pudgy bear. Super <laughs> cute. This was the last Disney branded movie to receive an Academy Award until The Little Mermaid in 1989. Others received nominations and two Touchstone Pictures movies, which is owned by Disney. The Color of Money, 1986. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. And Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I loved Who Framed Roger Rabbit. 1988. I haven't seen that movie in so long. No, me neither. I went to the theaters and saw this. Uh, and they re they received awards before that. Um, yeah, so in this... Uh, wow. Until The Little Mermaid came out. I mean, Little Mermaid was very good, as far as I remember. I haven't seen it in... I think it I was know, the years. first of a, a really long string of box office wins for Disney, like mm. Lion King and Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. It was just one after another after another. Yeah. Before that, the 80s was a little hit and miss with uh, Disney. They tried the, different things. Yeah, I think the Little Mermaid, and it was the renaissance of their animation period. Mm -hmm. And also Sebastian. Fantastic. Dance for passion. <clears throat> Julie Andrews initially turned down the world. Oh, oh no, sorry. we already read that. We already did this one. See, now this is the YouTube episode. If this yeah. was the podcast episode, this would be edited out. That's right. We'd we'd cut that right out. <laughs> Nobody would even know. There we go. Again. Um, this was the last Disney movie released by Roy O. Disney. By Wow. Roy while Roy O. Disney was still alive. Thank you. Um, he died a week after its U.S. premiere. Oh. Poor and Roy. I mean, there were rumors that he was a Nazi. Gather yeah, rumors that uh, the Disneys were yeah. Nazi sympathizers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I mean, they put out this movie where the Nazis get defeated. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe there was a change of heart. The armor in the climactic battle with the Nazis was authentic medieval armor, previously used in Camelot 67 and El Cid 61. When any item of armor was to, armor was to be destroyed, exact, exact fiberglass replicas were created and used. Interesting. That's it. I thought they did something else here. No, I think that's it. That's it. Did you did you notice the? the you East, put Mickey ears. Mickey ears on all the. <laughs> I did notice, but I wasn't going to say anything because I was no. like, that'd be really funny just to start getting comments from the people who watch this, being like, "Why the fuck were there Mickey ears popping up everywhere?" Yeah, it's like Disney motherfuckers. All right, so I get to record two of these. Okay, so that is our trivia. Now we are going to review bed knobs and broomsticks and see what we thought. All right, welcome back to the I Remember Like That Movie podcast. Did you go and watch bed knobs and broomsticks? I did. Your initial thoughts? Are you still there? Uh, yeah. Um, my initial, it's a very sweet movie and a lot less offensive than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah, it had the potential. <laughs> yeah, it had the potential to be exceptionally offensive. And I was like, hey, not really offensive. Um, a little misogynistic, but I mean, other than that. Yeah, well, it was 1940-something. 71. No, it was made in like 71. But it was the, it took place. Oh, in yeah, well, it, it took place yeah. in, during the 40s. Yeah. 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 There was no such thing as Messiah. It was just normal life. Yeah, no, it was perfectly normal to think that women were incapable of doing anything <laughs> and that they wanted a man around. Yep. My initial thoughts was 
it wasn't super califragilistic XBL. Dosh is good, but I did enjoy it. The only song that came close to um, Mary Poppins level was Portobello Nicely Road. Done. Yeah. Which, by the way, still has a market to this day. Portobello so Road, does it really? who live in the neighborhood are very, very rich. Yeah. Portobello Market. Um, I think the last two times I went to No, I went to it my first time in London. I don't think I went my second. Anyways, Portobello Market is a good time. Lots of different stalls. It's still actually when I was watching it during that song and during that scene, I was like, other than the streets being cleaner, it's still pretty much the same. Oh, cool. That'd be Just a lot cool. of like stalls on the street. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, 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 it was a little long, um, but I had fun. I had fun watching it. Mm. I get where some people were, were like, it's, it's yeah. a little long. Yeah. It was fun. It was light. Yeah. But it was a very sweet movie. Like I found myself smiling sometimes just being like, oh, so cute. All right. So let us dive into this Disney classic. In August 1940, during the Blitz, for those listening, the Blitz was a German bombing campaign against the United Kingdom in 1940 and 1941 during the Second World War, meaning the Germans bombed the living shit out of London and everything in between. Correct. <laughs> Three orphan <laughs> children named Charlie, Carrie, and Paul Rawlings are evacuated from London to peppering eye near the dorset coast where they are placed in the reluctant care of miss a eagle time eagle time price who agrees to eggleton. the arrangement temporarily eggleton ah that's right that's a song about it and she yeah. agrees she agrees the only reason i know that she, she just says it okay but she only does it for a temporary uh thing uh Disney had the greatest talent mm -hmm. of making the most dire situations like war, shipwrecks, maroonings, parents' death seem not that bad. <laughs> um, I like the kids. I like the older brother, Charlie. He gets on my nerves. But that's just because he's he's a little shit. He's a shit, He's yes. just a little shit. And I'm like, like I kind of get it. He's a shit. So I'm like, Charlie, stop being such a little shit. But, but other the than acting... that... I like the kids. But the acting wasn't bad. No, the acting was actually pretty good for the kids. Yeah. Especially the, children... the youngest one. I was pretty impressed. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, he was, he was pretty funny. The children attempt to run back to London, but after observing Miss Price attempt to fly on a broomstick, they change their minds. Other than the dinner menu, Mrs. Price's place was pretty sweet. Like a big house, seaside, tons of land. Yeah outbuildings like lots of space to run and there was food yeah. just not food that was delicious yeah because she's almost God like bless. vegan or like, something she vegetarian she? something like that yeah it was like she just kept naming vegetables and i was like girl that's not nice uh miss price reveals she is learning witchcraft through a correspondence school with hopes of using her spells in the british war effort against the nazis and offers the children a transportation spell in exchange for their silence she casts a spell on a bed knob and adds only Paul can work the spell as he is the one who handed the bed knob to her. Later, Miss Price receives a letter from her school announcing its closure, thus preventing her from learning the final spell. She convinces Paul to use the enchanted bed to return the group to London and locate Professor Emilius Brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I like how they made the traveling magic. Yeah. I yeah. like how they made the traveling magic. It looks dated, yes, but it doesn't look as bad as, say, a Winnebago flying in the air, a la Escape to Witch Mountain. I think it's because they used, as opposed to, like, special effects, they used animation for this. Light. Yeah. So that actually helped a lot with it because you already know it's a fantastical moment. It just makes it even more fantastical. So you're not expecting reality. You're not expecting it to look authentic. You're like, yeah uh, this is just all batch of crazy let's go and and yeah. i like that i like the use of of animation added into the live action in this yeah me too the group travels to portobello road ah portobello road um i play it but something tells me we'd get in trouble by playing the music did you find it like correct in today's yeah, culture? did you find it uh at all racist 
because I was looking at it going, I don't know, should it does it look racist? To me, it didn't. Well, I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm spicy white. Um, it didn't look racist, although they did. Because here's the thing. When you grow up in a very ethnic neighborhood, you do see certain stereotypes in life. So you know, like, especially when like we were growing up in my early years, Kensington market just had uh, still had a very strong Jewish presence. Um, even though a lot of different ethnic groups had started moving in there because before it was predominantly Jewish, but you still knew, okay, well, those are the Jewish people. Those are the, you know, Caribbeans. Those are the Portuguese. Those are the Italians. Those are the Polish guys. Those are the Ukrainians. Like you start to notice behaviors patterns of speak and stuff like that so that's why i'm not like it was just it was very accurate in like okay mm. and this is what you know the caribbeans would be doing and this is what you know the scots like they have the scottish soldiers performing and like all of that stuff and you you saw the snippets and you're like yeah those are the people who would have been there at that time so that's why i was like i was surprised it wasn't offensive because they didn't like they acknowledge the stereotypes so that people could easily recognize these groups yes and the diversity that was in portobello road but they didn't play it up and they didn't care caricature them car caricaturize sure we'll do that they didn't make them yeah. caricatures we're gonna go with that all right to locate the old bookseller who gave brown the book revealing that the spell is engraved on the star of Astaroth. I think I got that right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a medallion that belongs to a sorcerer of the name of that name. The bookseller explains that Astaroth experimented with his magic on animals, giving them anthrop <laughs> anthropomorphism. Forzum? Anthropomorphism? I can't remember. Morphosis? Anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. That's it. Anthropomorphism. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> they later <laughs> killed the sorcerer, took the medallion, and fled to a remote island called Nabumbu. Now, earlier, mm -hmm. uh, earlier at back at the house where Mr. Brown was squatting in, in the nursery, Paul finds a book called The Adventures of Nabumbu or something, Nabumbu or what, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um a 17th century Lascar had claimed to have traveled to the island, um, but the bookseller never found it. Paul confirms his existence by revealing a storybook he found in Mr. Brown's playroom. Oop, Wikipedia didn't cover it. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. They did cover it. And this might have been a little heavy for younger kids back in the day. Today's kids? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the group travels to Nabumbu and land in a lagoon. There, the bed goes underwater where Mr. Brown and Miss Price enter a dance contest and win first prize. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where I think the movie has a problem. It spends a lot of the time with the story, but for little kids, like it might be too much, even too boring. Like, although with the three kids, it might not be. Yeah. Uh, but this, this is where, as a kid, the movie starts to get good. Once they hit this lagoon, um it starts to get fun from a kid's point of view mm -hmm. just yeah i think there's a lot of build up and there's a lot of story building up until that point and then it goes straight into like okay and now we're a kid's movie yeah uh just then the bed is fished out of the sea by a bear who informs the group that humans are not allowed on the island by royal decree they are brought before the island's ruler king lee Leon, fuck, I know this Leonidas, who is wearing the star of Astaroth. Um, Jesus, you think it was the fucking Lord of the Rings here? Cartoon bear. <laughs> uh, Leonidas invites Mr. Brown to act as referee in a football match. Very enjoyable cartoon violence. I loved all the different animals. Yes, and all the animals were definitely behaving in the way they normally would. Yeah, which Ostrich was Ostrich sticking their head down. 
orangutan like swinging from the goalposts uh you know the elephant just using that trunk all the time i was like yeah this is a lot of fun the 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 hyena was it the hyena cheated and showed the mouse to the elephant and maybe the, the elephant get scared and yep. scored yeah that was great um the chaotic match ends in leonidas self-proclaimed victory but mr brown swaps the medallion with the referee whistle as he leaves and the group escapes back home miss price exercises substitutionary locomotion i did that <laughs> i yes, got it one did. <laughs> Which imbues inanimate, imbues inanimate objects with life. However, they quickly get out of control. Uh, very simple, mm -hmm. but great looking effects. Even today, so it looked good. fairly well. Yeah. Um, and when they return the amulet, when they return, the amulet is destroyed. Just so for people listening, because it comes from a different universe. And as they try to remember the words, Paul's like, I have it here in, I have it here in me book. <laughs> uh, they didn't even have to go to Nabubu. Well, Paul's like, I know them. Yeah. Well, they didn't know that before they went. They only knew no. afterwards. But Paul was like, I know the words. And then his sister's like, stop talking. She's trying to think. Be quiet. She's trying to think. And he's like, but I know the words. <laughs> Nobody would listen. And then he says the words. And everybody's like, how do you know? He's like, it's in my book. Mm. Yeah. Wish all of you had listened. When Miss Price is informed that the children can be moved by another home, she decides to let them stay realizing she has come to care for them and vice versa the children declare they want mr brown to be their father but mr brown wary of commitment <laughs> bids goodbye to the group and attempts to take a train back to london typical man a <laughs> little bit of responsibility pops up all of a sudden you know when someone's like hey do you want to take care of these three kids that you've become really close to he's all like what what huh what i'm just gonna there's a train train bye yeah I, I gotta go to the store and get some milk. I gotta pick up a pack of cigarettes. Um. So, oh, sorry, I'm just I'm just looking for my spot here on Wikipedia. I lost it. Anyways. Okay, here we go. Reaching the railway station, he finds there are no more trains until the morning, so intends to sleep on the platform's bench. A platoon of Nazi German commandos land on the coast via U-boat, intending to launch a raid on the town and invade Mrs. Price's house to use as their headquarters, imprisoning her and the children in the local museum. Those wacky Nazis are up to no good, I tell you. And <laughs> those kids and her are pretty lippy toward Nazis. <laughs> yeah. They, they got balls i could see yeah, yeah I, I mean if you look at it from the kids point of view they're like what are these fuckers gonna do kill us they've already killed all of our family they've blown up our house fuck that shit yeah you're right i could see the kids doing it but miss price should have known better they're lucky these were those nice nazis if they were the other ones ooh. i feel like Ms. well yeah but i feel like miss price is socially awkward Yes. Like she's very much like, I don't care. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It, it, so it, it wasn't realistic. You wouldn't want it to be realistic. <laughs> one kid would already been shot, one dangling by their ankles over the cliff while they're slapping Miss Price around. Where are the Jews? Where are you? <laughs> the sequel would have opened up with them in a concentration camp. <laughs> Portobello Road. I wish I was still at oh Portobello Road. <laughs> That's terrible. Charlie just shaking head. You really are um, a shit witch. But yeah, no, they would have been killed immediately. What the fuck kind of accent was that? <laughs> That's me Cockney that accent. Um, no, Miss Price and all the kids would have been shot immediately. Yes. That is not fucking Cockney. <laughs> No, I don't even know what I'm going to tell you right is. now. <laughs> all um, my family. But yeah, they would have been shot. Is that's not the point. The point is, here's the real point. Your accent is terrible. Please stop doing that. And Miss <laughs> Price and all the kids would have been shot immediately if the Nazis were like, we're going to take over your house. Uh, yeah. Give me one second here. I was thinking about going to England next year for a vacation. Um, I haven't been there in go so long. Oh, I I was a kid. A I was a it's kid a last time I was there. Oh god. The food alone so good. 
I love British food. I love if England's you food. Get food at the right place. Yeah. Uh, me too. It's fucking delicious. There's yeah. nothing better. Nothing better than a really good fish and chips. But you got to get oh, like yeah. really good, like from a proper chippy. And then like bangers and mash. I love toad in the hole. So good. Oh, I love toad in the hole. And then a proper Sunday roast. Yeah. Proper Sunday roast. With horse at a pub. Yeah. Always. Yeah. They make me hungry. Beef, gravy, <laughs> roasties. Oh, sorry. <laughs> This is what I think about going there, buying chocolate and, and crisps, and then just eating. Yeah. Okay. Now where am I looking for friggin' England shit here? Um, so at the train station, Mr. Brown fends off two Germans cutting phone lines. He doesn't fend them off. Knocks them both out with a super uppercut. That's how he did it back in the 40s. Yes. He... He heads back to Mrs. Price's house where he manages to perform magic for the first time and turns himself into a white rabbit so he can disguise himself to avoid Germans. First, he's spotted and locks himself into a giant and beautiful pantry. Uh, that's how old I'm getting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right there with you, my friends. Right there with you. But it, it, but it is my dream to retire in a coastal town in England outside of town nice old british house by the sea walk to the pub oh that'd be heaven i love that idea i would totally do it in england I, too i would even settle for like maine i just have halifax. to find a rich british husband mm, i thought about halifax i thought about moving there yeah halifax is nice well i i've never did i have been no i've never been to halifax it looks nice though i've never been to halifax either but it definitely like most of the Maritimes has a very um, British, like Scottish Irish, yeah, vibe to it. Yes, and I'm down yeah, because I, I I've been to New Brunswick on the 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 ocean side. Um, awesome, just awesome, and they have like pubs. Mm -hmm. and, yes, it does have a very um, that whole England Ireland feel to it. Yeah, British Isles kind of vibe. Okay, so um, where am I here? Da, 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 da. He finds Miss Price and the children at the museum and inspires Miss Price to use substitutionary locomotion to enchant the museum's exhibits into an army. This was a great finale. So good. I loved it. It really had scope. Like, I don't know how that many soldiers, uniforms and suits of armors all fit in that museum. They must have had a basement or something. But when it panned across the hilltop, like, it was an army. And again, it looked good. Yeah. It looked really, really good. I was actually really impressed with the quality of the graphics for this. Because it, it was done in 1971. But it was done so well. And part of me is also wondering if maybe they use some of the animators in order to make the graphics like or the special effects for the scenes that it was used in a little more seamless so you didn't have oh, like a maybe. big gradient between yeah i have a feeling they did i could be wrong about that if anybody knows feel free to let us know the army of knights armor and military uniform chases the germans away but as the germans retreat they destroy mrs price's workshop ending her career as a witch well the battle lasted longer than that this was very and it was very slapstick three stooges humor uh just with nazis mm -hmm. yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> um I thought it was a I thought it was a wise decision not to actually use any swastikas in this movie. I mean, you knew they were Nazis, mm -hmm. like seen one Nazi, seen them all. But there was that time was, when they were talking to each other in German. Yeah. All the gray suits. <laughs> yeah, no, it was super clear. Super clear that they were Nazis. Yeah. We didn't need to drive the point home. Yeah. No, no, it was really well done. Though disappointed her career is over. She is happy she played a small part in the war effort. Uh, why was her career over? Like, why did she have to stop being a witch? 
Oh, because she also decided that now that her workshop was done and all of her spells had been incinerated, that um, she really actually wasn't that good of a witch. Oh. Because she didn't have the memory for it and she kept forgetting and her spells didn't last that long. So she was like, nah, it's better if I retire. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Shortly afterwards, Miss Price has officially adopted and committed herself to raising the children. Mr. Brown has enlisted in the army and departs with the local home guard escorting him, but promises that he will return and shares a kiss with Miss Price. Okay, so private Mr. Brown is like 54. Would they have taken old man Brown? No. 44, I think, was the cutoff. I mean, they draft, but 44 was the cutoff. No. Yeah, but was he in his 50s? Yeah, when he shot this, watching was, this movie, he was I realized something. I was like, how old was he was 54, but how old yeah. was his character? He looked That's the 54. Thing. Like, if his character was <laughs> supposed to be 35. No, he, well, we all know. Was he supposed he to be 35? Looked old. But then again, we don't know how old they're supposed to be. And really, can we just agree that it's a Disney movie? They're going to take him. Yeah, because he wants to enough. help with the war effort. I, I thought he was just going to march around town with those old guys <laughs> that end up at the pub. Well, first I was like, oh, he enlisted. And then he walks over to the old guys. I was like, or is he just walking around town? Is he in the home guard? <laughs> like, what's going on? Then I realized that. Um, I was like, oh, okay. Paul reveals he still has the enchanted bed knob, hinting they can continue on with their adventures. Uh, but the movie was not successful, so no sequel. Although Disney wasn't into sequels back then. They started making sequels later. Well, yeah, because they started... Re I think it started with... I think it was mostly trilogies started picking up. And they're like, oh, people yeah. want to see more of the same characters. So then they started doing... Like, if one movie made enough money, they were like, okay, let's find a way to make a sequel. Even if it didn't deserve a sequel. They were like, we'll do a sequel. And sometimes they made money, sometimes they didn't. But it was very much a, oh, we can make money from telling stories about the same characters? Because I think in the 70s, there were quite a few trilogies. There were a few trilogies that people were like, oh. Oh, we can, like, Star Wars started in the, the 70s. And then Jaws started in the 70s. What was the other trilogy? I think it was... Was the godfather in the 70s yep so they were like oh multiple stories like multiple movies about the same character let's try and capitalize on that but then what they don't realize is that these movies made sense to have sequels like it made sense to have a second movie yeah. and they started taking like one-off movies and they're like we can force a sequel and then we got a bunch and... of shit movies and that is our movie. What is your score? Uh, stream it. Stream it. It's a sweet, fun movie. A little bit long. Um, but it's a good time. And it kind of, I mean, if you want to teach your kids more about World War II, it's a gentle prompt for that. Um, and it doesn't go too in-depth. And it doesn't get too scary so you can kind of be like well you see there was this big war and people were fighting and the germans were the bad guys but they're really really sorry about it now um <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's 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 a fun sweet nice movie and and is it super great no but can it still be enjoyable to be watched today yeah 50 years old and it's still a fun movie to watch so stream it yeah all right my score do 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 uh this movie casts a spell on me while not the best of disney classic live action bed knobs and broomsticks is definitely worth visiting uh for a swim in a boo boo lagoon a soccer game with king uh, what's his name i can't pronounce or those wacky nazis or just to go back to portobello road uh the kids were quite good and even humorous. Angela Lansbury was great. David Tomlinson was great. While a little long for some kids and some attention challenged adults, the story putters along at a fairly good pace. And while a little slow to start, it does pick up quite nicely once you do get to Portobello Road. Um, but I, I would say, uh, officially, I would say it's worth a rental. 
or even buying at a discount. Um, but mm. Disney Disney Plus, if you have Disney Plus, uh, it's there waiting to stream. It's 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 worth it. It's a fun movie to go watch. I think if you have the opportunity to buy it for say like ten bucks or less, do it. Because yeah. it's it's worth the investment. I think it's still a movie you can watch five, 10, 15 years down the road to like the next few generations of kids. And and I think it'll also be fun to kind of explain like, oh yeah, you see all the animated stuff that was all drawn by hand. And then they're gonna yeah. like lose their minds at that and be like, there were there were no computers to do that. Some guy at a desk with a light. Yeah. A piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And and that's uh, another thing. Uh, Max, uh, the HBO company or whatever, and a couple others have started taking their properties mm-hmm. off their street, their streamers to license outs to other streamers. Like HBO has the Harry Potter movies, um, Warner Brothers, Max, whatever it is, and um, they license them out so it's not available on the streamers. If Disney ever does this, I will cancel fucking Disney. Yeah, they can do that Disney's with their one new of the shit. more reliable ones. Where they're not necessarily, yeah. Like I think not their own lines right. Now. Yeah, no, it's it. That's one of those things where I'm like, with Disney Plus, they're pretty steady. Like when one of their properties comes out, it goes on Disney Plus. Um, yeah, vibe. So it stays there, and I like that. The other day, I went to go watch Mind Hunters, not to be confused with Mind Hunter, the high quality netflix tv show or show um because it's a netflix show yeah that one's netflix mind hunters i love that show is the really shitty movie from the 2000s about fbi profilers (laughs) the the show i haven't watched it yet but i've heard it's phenomenal the movie beyond incredible is ridiculously cheesy I, I can't wait to watch it, but I need, like, this is what my holidays are going to be. Over the holidays, I'm literally just picking every single day. I'm going to watch something else that I've been meaning to watch and binge through because that's what I do. Um, but anyways, Mind Hunters, I went to go watch it on uh, Prime, and it had been on there for years. Now it's gone. And I was like, mm. what? Can't even rent it. It's not even on there at all. And I'm like, but I want to watch Christian Slater. And... LL Cool J and Johnny Lee Miller <laughs> and Chris and Val Kilmer's in it for a little bit too. I'm like, I want, I want all of them. Then there's like two women in this, in which I'm like, eh, that's just way to go, boys club, FBI. Thanks. Anyways, that's a that's so why I'm anyway, considering I that. buying movies again, like ones I really, really, really want to have yeah no i I feel you i actually just bought a dvd of home alone and home alone 2 because i was like (laughs) they're awesome those movies at the holidays every year and i'm like i don't have it on dvd you know they are let me get that so that i never miss yeah i know but this is also i have friends just in case like to rent cabins and stuff and I'm a just oh. in case there too. I'm terrible about that. But I was like, I mean, I have a friend who has a cottage and she has a DVD player up there. So like I have a whole bag of like some of my DVDs that I'm like, I never rewatch any of these. So I'm going to give these to you. Should be interesting. All right. What were we doing? Okay. Anything else Anywho. on, on uh, bed knobs and broomsticks? We're pretty much done. No, it's just a really sweet kind of fun movie. Like it's it was an enjoyable 2 hours of entertainment. Yep. Like I was not angry, I was not frustrated, I was not really bored. I was just like, mm, with a little more editing, it probably could have been a little bit shorter, but I wasn't Yes. Mad at it. It was it was a really nice way to spend 2 hours. I agree. Well then, Thank you for joining us, and until the next movie we remember liking. And now, folks, it's time to say goodnight. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.